Hi. We're reading the story, I almost said the mystery of history. Um, we're on page 118, and we were at the end of Samson and Delilah. Uh, okay, let me read this last little sentence here. When Delilah saw that he had told her everything, she sent word to the rulers. Basically, when she saw that he had given all of the secrets, now she was set to betray him. She said, okay, good, good. Now he's, he's giving me all the info. I'll go betray him now. And she said to the Philistines, come back once more. He has told me everything. So the rulers of the Philistines returned with the silver in their hands. After putting him to sleep on her lap, He's, she, she's like, come just sleep right here. Sleep right here. I don't know. I was like, yes, I will sleep right in, in the lap of the lady who has betrayed me. What a good idea. Well, she, he doesn't know she's betrayed him yet, but just after he's told her about his hair, um, and he, she has tried to betray him these other <laughs> times, and he knows that. This is crazy. He's been like, yes, I think I will take, put my head on your lap right by your hands where you might have some scissors or something. Who knows what? Like, she may have had a razor? Ah, yes, I like a razor. <laughs> so That's she really called crazy. for someone to shave off the seven braids of his hair and so began to subdue him and his strength left him. And then she called, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. <coughs> Oh, and so he horrible. woke from his sleep and thought, I'll go out as before and shake myself free. I don't know why he thought that. Of course, you just told her. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. Then the Philistines seized him. I wonder. I don't he know. tried to break free. He, he did, but he didn't know that the Lord had left him. There's a message in there somewhere. And we don't realize the Lord has left us. Um... When we're not walking in his presence, if we're not careful to stay with him. The Philistines blinded him and took him down to Gaza. They bound him with bronze shackles and they set him to grinding grain in the prison. So they put him in prison and his job was to grind the grain. But the hair on his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. And now the rulers of the Philistines assembled to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, which was their idol. And to celebrate their idol, saying our, they said our God, but it's not their God because, well, it is their God because they put their idol in the place of God. I still call idols, idols. I feel like. They said, Samson has been delivered by our idol, but they're not going to call him idol, by our God and our enemy into our hands. And when the people saw him, they praised their idol, saying, our, our God has delivered our enemy into our hands, the one who laid waste our land and multiplied our slain. I think that's <clears throat> really important to note that they're praising this idol. <clears throat> but for them, it appears like, yes, this idol has finally come through for us. Or this, our God, look, he's delivered the enemy into our hand. And Samson was their enemy. And Samson was delivered. But what they really didn't realize is this whole time they'd been not they had not been worshiping the true God, and the true God was about to uh, show up. Did God deliver it, Samson? No, God did. Now that's another thing to point out. Count is God is the one who is kind of like allowing this stuff to happen because He wants to create a situation where He can. Uh, exercise judgment on the Philistines because the Philistines have been idol worshipers for a long time. Um, so in a sense, God did put Samson there. Well, I would say he did. And now Samson's hair is growing so they're back. they're sort of praising God. They're not praising God though. They're giving credit to their idol who they call Dagon. They've established this God they call Dagon who is not God. But they're praising Dagon for what God has done. It would be like us praising the sun God for raising the sun every day. And does, the, does God uh, keep the sun where it's supposed to be? Yes. But it is it a sun God called Cirque du Soleil? No, sorry. 
sorry Cirque du Soleil that's not I don't I'm not trying to say speak against Cirque du Soleil um that's a don't worry about it um let's just call him what 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 do they call the sun god Ra. Ra there we go um it's like praising Ra for keeping the sun in the sky does God keep the sun in the sky yes is Ra that God no see the difference um Okay, where were we? Okay, so they called Samson out of prison and he performed for them. I wonder what he performed. It says when they were in high spirits. I'm, I'm wondering if that means when they had... When they got themselves drunk. <laughs> yeah, when they had their alcohol. Um, when they stood him among the pillars, Samson said to the servant who held his hand. Why did they have to hold his hand? So that he could walk forward because he was blind. He was blind. He said, put me where I can feel the pillars that the support the temple. So <laughs> he said, so that I may lean against them. He's like, I just need to lean against the temple pillars that the ones that support the whole temple. Those are the ones I need okay. to lean against for support. And he was like, so where can I lean any of these pillars over here? Oh, no, I need to lean against the main ones like really hard. So I can break them. The temple was crowded with men and women and all the rulers of the Philistines were there. And on the roof were about 3,000 men and women watching Samson perform. I'm still confused as to what he's performing. Maybe no women or children. Uh, Samson prayed to the Lord. He said, Sovereign Lord, remember me. Please, God, strengthen me just once more and let me, with one blow, get revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson reached toward the two pillars on which the temple stood, bracing himself against them, his right hand on the one and his left hand on the other. Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he pushed with all his might and down came the temple on the rulers and all the people in it. It says, thus he defeated many more people when he died than while he lived. And then his brothers and his father's whole family went down to get him. They brought him back and buried him between Zorah and Eshtael in the tomb of Manoah, his father. He had led Israel for 20 years. That's confusing to me that he was leading Israel at this time. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't really seem like he's leading Israel. It really seems like he's just doing his own thing. Although he saved Israel. It, it seems like he's kind of, to me, it seems like he's doing his own thing. But at, at certain periods, like the Lord's spirit will come upon him to kind of like direct him in the direction that God is wanting him to go. It doesn't seem like a lot of leadership, but I could be wrong. After Samson, the Israelites continued their pattern of spiritual compromise during the sad period of history. Now, enter Ruth. So Ruth is coming into the story at this time. She was a young Moabite woman. If the Hebrew people thought God was their own, their exclusive property, this foreign woman was challenging that myth. What does that mean? That, uh, that if, if the Jews believed that a God, they only they could believe in God. That God was only their God and nobody else. But if they had paid... I, I, they should know before now that that's not true. Do you know why? Because Rahab. what happened? Rahab. That's a good example. Rahab has already been included. But also when they left Egypt, there was a mixed multitude that went with them, meaning a bunch of the Egyptians who were like, we're out of here. We're not staying with this Pharaoh guy. Uh-uh. Uh, they were included in Israel too. So it was being shown again and again. And plus Abraham. Abraham was formerly of the idol worshippers. Ruth was loyal, determined, lovely, and clever. She became a part of the lineage of David. More important, she was God's choice to illustrate the worldwide reach of God's special gift of hope and life. His plan of salvation as broad and deep as is his divine love. Again, so that part is just kind of like a little summary. Ruth does give us that example that, that God is... Um, God is not just, the, he's not only the God of the Israelites. He's a God of the Gentiles as well. And we can see that through Ruth and Rahab. And do you know who else? Everyone. Not everyone, because there were the Israelites. But Caleb. Caleb was a, either a Ken, Kenizzite or a Kenzanite. I can't remember exactly. But he was, a, he was one of the ites. 
and then so, and then he joined the Israelites during the wilderness, and then before that, all the Egyptians. Bless you. Okay, so we're gonna stop there. We are on page one twenty one. And what are we going into next? Oh, we're going into Ruth. Hello. Um, yeah. Goodbye. Bye.